speaking with the previous artistic director, David Owen, um, and probably at an opening night uh, for one of our shows here. And, and uh, we were in the lobby, and he suggested, you know, he said, well, you know, Walter Dale's done a lot of new plays, and uh, someday maybe there should be an anthology uh, to put these together. And I sort of, I filed it in my mind. I didn't think too much about it. I was still kind of learning the ropes of Walter Dale at the time, and, and uh, I knew that the Walter Dale had done a one-act festival, you know, every year since the uh, basically the early '90s, and uh, and most of those plays were new plays, and I wasn't familiar with them other than that. But I just I knew that there was a number to choose from at the time, but I really didn't have an idea until I started to look further into it just um, how many new plays that Walter Dale had uh, premiered, and uh, in fact the numbers are now over 60. I think we're almost up to 65 here uh, in Walter Dale's 50 years. And this, to me, uh, compared with any theater, uh, most theaters in the country anyways, that's an incredible number, um, especially for a theater that isn't devoted specifically to new play development and new play programming. Um, and so, yeah, so I started to look into uh, some of the plays that, uh, that, were, that were out there um, from the past. Uh, and from there, um, certain names came up, you know, like uh, Brad Fraser sticks out and uh, his, uh, his first play, Mutants, his first full-length um, production, uh, uh, Mutants, was uh, premiered here at Walterdale and, uh, in the early 80s. And uh, I had kind of heard rumors, you know, if anybody who knows Brad Fraser knows that uh, um, he's, he's, he's always been an outspoken guy and uh, very controversial. Controversy often seems to follow him, and uh, I think he, he quite enjoys that position. But um, he's, very, he's a very intelligent, sharp, sharp guy, and I, and I, start, I started to... Um, so I started to look into it, and I asked him, for in, in his case, anyways, I asked him if he, uh, if uh, you know, he'd be interested in having his play in the anthology, and he was, and he was excited about it. I didn't know what sort of response I'd get from him if he just would ignore my email, or if he would, uh, uh, you know, or if he just, um, you know, if maybe he left with, uh, you know, bitter thoughts or something like that. And no, it was not, not at all. You know, he, he got back to me within two hours of me sending the email to him, uh, through. Uh, Playwrights Canada Press, actually, so even through a, a second party, he got back to me within two hours, and he said, um, you know, he'd do anything for Walter Dale. And this just sort of, and it reminded me of the sorts of stories that I've heard from so many people that have been with Walter Dale, whether it's for five years or, or you know, 50 years, where, where they just became so devoted to the idea of what Walter Dale represents and uh, the experience that they had. And in Brad Fraser's case, um, Paul Thompson from uh, Theatre Pass Mirai in Toronto happened to be in Edmonton when Mutants um, was playing. And uh, Paul Thompson uh, heard that uh, this play was going on and he, uh, he came to see Mutants and, um, and after the run he asked uh, Brad if he could, uh, if Brad was interested in coming to Toronto to work at Pass Mirai uh, in sort of the collective atmosphere that uh, Pass Mirai is so well known for. So in Brad Fraser's case, he definitely fits into that uh, stepping stone approach where he was an amateur, well, he was working in an amateur uh, theater with a very professional attitude, and his play uh, kind of caught interest, you know, and uh, Workshop West was also interested in working with Brad Fraser, um, having seen Mutants as well. So within a few years, Brad was, uh, really within a year, Brad was working across the country. He was in Saskatoon, and then he went to Toronto to work at Pass Mirai, and his career kind of uh, took flight from there.